But we're going to start with our newsmaker segment and talk with one of the new members of the Kansas House of Representatives. Representative Ree Shu, a Democrat from Westwood who defeated incumbent Republican Melissa Rooker in the 25th District. The Kansas legislature is scheduled to begin its new session on January the 14th. Mr. Shu, welcome to Ruckus and congratulations on your victory. Thanks, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. This is your first campaign for elective office, as sure. I understand it. So uh, tell us a bit about your background and what prompted you to get involved. So to go way back, I was born in Switzerland, actually, which nobody ever guesses. Uh, my parents were Chinese PhD students, and so uh, we emigrated to the United States when I was about two years old. Um, grew up in Rolla, Missouri, studied economics at USC, um, and moved to Kansas City right after college. And essentially just after the, the 2016 election, I, I just couldn't do nothing anymore. I, I saw so many people putting their time and their effort and their money fighting against the things that I love most about this country, why, why my parents moved to this country. Uh, and I just decided I need to do something to, to step up and fight back a little bit. Where's the 25th district? It is the most northeastern part, portion of Johnson County, so Westwood, Roland Park, Mission, Fairway, um, Mission Woods, Mission Hills. Okay, now you're a Democrat, mm -hmm. and you won by, I think, 121 votes. Yeah, landslide. Over the incumbent yeah. Melissa Rooker, who has been around for a while, described sure. as a moderate Republican. Sure. And the news media in Kansas City has been generally favorable toward her and her comments over the years. Sure. So what policies did the two of you disagree about? So the biggest ones for me, um, and, and I, I really appreciate Representative Rooker's service, um, but there are just a couple of smaller things that, that were really, really important to me, and I think my district as well. Um, the first one was the environment. Um, you know, she received a failing grade from the Sierra Club back in 2016. Um, she voted yes on the Tyson chicken bill, and then, which is very harmful to the environment. Um, the second one is net neutrality. Um, that's something that the federal government's not going to take care of, and, and so I believe that the state should be taken care of. And, and then um, she spoke against net neutrality at the well as well. Were you in concurrence on school funding? Sure, yeah, school funding, LGBT rights, Medicaid expansion, we're definitely in concurrence on there. So it's kind of interesting, moderate Republicans and Democrats yeah. don't seem to be that far apart on a number of Yeah, issues. and you saw that in the news this week, right, with a couple of the moderate Republicans flipping to be, be yeah. Democrat. Uh, what did you think of that? Do you think that's the beginning of a trend? I don't know if it's the beginning of a trend. Um, I, I think it's the uh, continuance of, of a trend, right? Um, national, nationwide, um, suburban women are the ones that really pushed um, the, the, the blue wave, and, and this is just kind of continuance of that, I think. Well, what do you think about this amendment Republicans may propose to the legislature and then to the public if it's passed by the legislature? That final control of school finance would rest with you and others in the legislature not with the state Supreme Court. I am totally against that. Um, I, I think that we need balance here in, in the state when it comes to school funding, and, and the, the Supreme Court has been a phenomenal backstop for us in supporting school funding, and, and we need to make sure that they, they are the backstop for that. At what point will you know and will others know that schools are sufficiently financed in Kansas? Uh, the Supreme Court's already laid a very straightforward path for that. We just need to add 90 what, million. What, to just add $90 million each year to uh, meet for inflation. inflation? Yep, exactly. It's a straightforward path, but then um, some of the other representatives in Southern Johnson County have said that they want to redo the school funding, start from scratch, uh, which I am also very opposed. We have, we have a lot of other issues um, that are very high priority, and, and, and if there's a straightforward path to, to get to constitutional funding, I, I think we should take that. Uh, the governor wants to expand uh, Medicaid to mm -hmm. 150,000 people. Yep. Uh, can the state afford that with no tax hike? Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the, the budget numbers continue to look good and will continue um, to, to, to look good, I believe. And so the numbers are there. Um, but even past budgetary reasons, it, it's a moral reason, right? 150 Kansans right now don't have affordable access to health care. Um, it is a, a, a moral imperative that, that we allow them to do so. But Medicaid is part of the uh, Obama care program and it's in the courts now so mm -hmm. who knows what the future will bring for it who knows yeah um, I, I'm gonna continue to, to go um, as as process as as we go um, 
but we'll go through the appeals process and see how long it's Very it quick takes. final question. You're a Democrat. Can you work with both moderate and conservative Republicans? Yeah, definitely. I've already reached out to a lot of the conservative freshmen that I met at orientation. Um, we're writing back and forth. We're emailing back and forth and, and, and just trying to find the, the, where we, where we um, unite, you know, and, and start to develop relationships. You finding some areas? Yeah. All definitely. right, great. Hey, thank you for coming in. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, congratulations again. Come back and see us. Awesome. Thank All you, right, Mike. great. Bye. That is new Kansas legislator Ree Shu. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.